This video demonstrates a simple method for laparoscopic vaginal cuff closure after hysterectomy. A pelvic trainer with a fixed camera is used. We need two needle holders, a closed end nut pusher, an extra 5mm trocar, scissors, a forceps and a suture. This needle holder has a straight handle which makes rotation easy. The index finger releases the grip. We use a 90 cm absorbable braided suture for extracorporeal knot tying. Needle introduction with a 5 mm trocar is accomplished using the following steps. Insertion of the left hand needle holder, pulling the thread through the extra trocar, reinsertion of the needle holder. The left needle holder will grasp the thread about 1 or 2 cm close to the needle. The left abdominal trocar is removed. The needle holder with the needle is introduced into the left abdomen. The trocar is pushed over the needle holder. Before or during suturing, the free end of the thread is inserted into the knot pusher and secured with forceps. In the abdomen, rotate the needle holder until a good position is found to grasp the needle. Before suturing, the path of the needle is visualized. The entry angle of the needle tip into the tissue should be 90 degrees. Advancing the needle through the tissue and rotating the needle driver creates a transmural stitch with the exit point in the anterior vaginal skin. Now the left needle driver takes the needle parallel to the needle plane and completes the first stitch. The right needle holder can re-grasp the needle, which will still be in the correct orientation. The second stitch is made just like the first one. By advancing and rotating the needle driver, creating a transmural stitch, with its entry point in the posterior vaginal skin. Again the left needle holder takes the needle in the shown position with a firm grip and completes the stitch. Any large needle must be bent straight before extraction through the trocar. Forceful rotation of only the right needle holder will bend the needle sufficiently. The left needle driver now takes the thread. The closed right needle holder is placed near the exit point of the posterior stitch as a guide for the thread to avoid tearing the vaginal cuff. The bent needle can now easily be extracted through the 5mm trocar. Cut off the needle to avoid injuries. The anterior part of the suture with knot pusher is marked in white. The posterior part, which will be under tension, is marked in red. The left hand holds the white suture as shown, a reverse grip of the forceps. Index finger and thumb should be free to later grasp the red end. The knot pusher goes temporarily into the left hand. Now we are ready to tie the knots. A simple loop of the red suture around the white suture is formed with the right hand. Now take the knot pusher into the right hand. The red suture is held between index finger and thumb of the left hand. The red suture must be under tension. The white end can be very loose. The loop is advanced onto the vaginal cuff. The knot pusher should be positioned in the cul-de-sac, some centimeters away from the loop. When the desired position is reached, the knot pusher is extracted. The first loop does not have to be tight. For the second loop, Exchange knot pusher and red suture and form the loop just like the first one. After that, exchange knot pusher and red suture again. When pushing the knot, apply tension to the red end and keep the white end loose. The second loop is pushed into the abdomen, always keeping the knot pusher some distance away from the loop. Both loops together form a slip knot. The red suture will slide through the knot when pulled by the left hand. To create a secure knot, two or more additional loops, at least one of them, non-identical, are formed and pushed onto the knot. Laparoscopic suturing and knot tying are two of the most difficult tasks in laparoscopic surgery. With a pelvic trainer as used here, techniques can be practiced in order to be well prepared for actual surgery. With regular practice, the improved skill 
will also transfer to other tasks in laparoscopy. For educational purposes, the suture is shown in the middle. In real surgery, vaginal cuff closure should always start at the corners and include the sacro-uterine ligaments. Up to five single stitches or three figure of N sutures are recommended to achieve good colpotomy closure and prevent vaginal cuff dehiscence. The quality of the vaginal cuff suture, depending on either vaginal skin inversion, as shown here, or vaginal skin exclusion and eversion, should be investigated. Thank you for watching.